Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel again. One last reminder for tomorrow, Saturday 27 June at 6 p.m. Central European time, we will have the live stream and I will be showing you a little bit about my office, how I prepare the videos, how I test them, and also what's on my main machine, how I configured it, and what is my workflow basically. And I will be also ready, of course, to answer all of your questions regarding those topics. In this particular video, we are going to look at how we can recover the grub bootloader when we are in a system with dual booting Windows 10 and Manjaro. Very often, as you might know, when you make an update in Windows 10, it's gonna probably erase the grub bootloader and you'll be not anymore able to access your Linux installation, in this case Manjaro. And there are several methods that we can use to restore the grub bootloader. Now, on the Manjaro website, there is a method which is very well described. There are two methods, one is the automatic one and the other one is the manual. So the automatic method does not work always, for me at least. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can actually manually restore Grub on your Manjaro installation dual booting with Windows 10. Let's get started. So the scenario is the following. We installed Manjaro dual booting with Windows 10 and then we have a Windows 10 update coming sometimes and at the end of the update basically the grub boot loader disappears and I'm not able to boot into Manjaro anymore. So how we can recover grub it's quite simple and there are several methods this is just one that I'm going to show you today. If you have another one that you prefer or that you know please share it in the comments below so that the community can profit from that as well. What I did here, I downloaded again the Manjaro ISO and I booted up my machine from there. So I want to repair basically Grub from a live install. So what I'm going to do first, again, I'm going to choose my time zone by scrolling down here and then to the last city and also change my keyboard and hit enter. And for the rest, I just let it as it is. And so I just hit here the boot option to boot up Manjaro live. And it's going to take a second to do that. So here we are in the live ISO. Let me get rid of these messages here and this window and adjust the screen resolution. I'm going to settings, display and choosing my monitor. There you go and click apply and keep the configuration. There you go. So what we're going to do here, we're going to open up the terminal and let me go full screen and increase the font size so that's easier to see. And the first thing I'm going to do is to type in LSPLK to have a look at the disk. So we have SDA1, which is the EFI partition created by Windows. You remember this from the previous video, it's about 100 megabytes. We have SDA2, this is a Microsoft Reserve partition. SDA3 is where Windows is installed. SDA4 is a healthy recovery system. And SDA5 is where Manjaro is installed. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna mount these two partitions, SDA5 and SDA1. So our root partition and our EFI partition. So let's clean up the terminal and change first to the sudo user by typing in sudo su and hit enter. And clean up the terminal and type in mount slash dev slash SDA5 and then slash mount. So we are mounting here our Manjaro directory basically and hit enter. We are going to do the same for the EFI partition. So I'll type in mount slash dev slash SDA1 slash mount slash boot slash EFI, which was the partition we selected when we installed Manjaro, and hit enter. Now, if we type in LSBLK, we'll see we have our mount points there. So one step it's done, let's clean up the terminal. Now we need to move into the slash mount directory shortly, so we can type in CD slash mount and hit enter and clean up the terminal. And now we need to mount some other directories in here that give us access to some file system tools. So the first one is the proc directory, so we can type in mount dash t and then proc space proc and we're going to mount this under slash mount slash proc and hit enter next is the sys directory so we can type in mount dash t and then sys fs and then sys and we're going to mount this under slash mount slash sys and hit enter next one is the dev directory but we have to bind this into the mount dev directory in our installation so to do this we'll type in mount dash o for option so we are binding here with the bind option the slash dev directory and we're going to mount this under slash mount slash dev and hit enter and the last option is the pts directory so we can type in mount dash t for type and then dev pts and then pts and we're going to mount this under slash mount slash dev slash pts and hit enter now it's time to shroot into our installation. So we can type in shroot 
a slash mount, and hit enter. There you go, we can clean up the terminal. And the grab bootloader and all the other packages should be already installed. If you want to make sure, for example, that grab is already installed, we can type in now sudo pacman-s yy to refresh also the servers and then grab and hit enter. It's going to take a second to do this. And you can see there it says reinstalling. So that means grab is already installed. So we don't need to actually do this. So we can type in n and hit enter. And let's clean up the terminal. Okay, now it's time to reinstall grub. And because this is a EFI system, what we need to do, we need to type in grub dash install and then dash dash target equal x86 underscore 64 dash EFI and then dash dash EFI dash directory equal, you remember we saw that before, was slash boot slash EFI and then dash dash boot loader dash ID equal Manjaro. And the last option is dash dash recheck. And then we can hit enter. And the installation is going to fail because we don't have the EFI variables loaded in the system. So what we need to do here, we need to actually exit once the root by typing in exit and mount the module by typing in mod probe EFI var fs and hit enter. Now we need to root in again by typing in root slash mount and let's clean up the terminal because we need to still mount the EFI vars directory. So to do this, we can type in mount dash T and then EFI var FS and then again EFI var FS. And we're going to mount this under slash sys slash firmware slash EFI and then slash EFI vars and hit enter. There you go. Now we can reinstall grub. So I'll pull up the last two commands here and then we can install grub by hitting enter. And as you can see, the installation now was successful. So what we can do now, we can update the configuration file for grub by typing in update dash grub and hit enter. And it's going to take a second here to regenerate the configuration file. And this is done. However, we see that Windows is not in there, but we'll fix this in a second. So now we can exit the root by typing in exit. And we'll exit also the sudo user by typing in exit again. And let's reboot our machine by typing in reboot and hit enter. So it's going to take a second to do that. And because Windows was not recognized, the system is going to boot Manjaro directly. There you go. But we'll fix this in a second. Let me log in here. And I'll close this window and I'll pull up again one terminal. And I'll go already full screen, increase the font size. And now we can type in sudo update dash grub and hit enter. Enter our sudo password. And it's going to recreate the configuration file, but this time it's going to pick up also the Windows installation. There you go, found Windows Boot Manager. So that means if now we'll type in reboot and hit enter, we should be presented here with our grub bootloader where we can choose Manjaro and Windows. And there you go, this is it here. We have Manjaro and also the Windows Boot Manager. So we can boot back again in Windows and also in Manjaro. So this is one method how you can recover your grub installation in Manjaro after you made a Windows update. I'm sure there are many other methods and as I said before, if you know another one, please share it with the community in the comments below. So there you go guys, this is one method on how we can recover grub when we are dual booting Manjaro with Windows 10. Again, as I said in the video, there are many other methods and if you know some of them, please share them with the community in the comments below. Also, for other distributions like Ubuntu or Fedora, there are other methods and I'm going to cover those in future videos because they require some other tools. Some of them require also a little bit more tweaking, so I will make sure that I cover those in future videos as I said before. Also, as a last reminder, for tomorrow at 6 p.m. Central European time, we have a live stream where you are all invited to come and join me in my office here. I'm going to share with you a little bit how I produce my videos how I test them and of course how I prepare them. I'm gonna share with you also my main machine, how I produce the videos and the software I use and why I use it and also a little bit my workflow. So I hope to see many of you there tomorrow at 6 p.m. Central European time and I thank you very much for watching this video and I hope you liked it. If you did, please hit the like button below and subs to the channel if you haven't already as subs always helps us out. And if you want to support the channel, you can do so by visiting our Patreon website or you can donate via PayPal through our website as well. Again, thank you so much guys for watching the video. I hope to see many of you there tomorrow and I'll see you soon in the next video.